disaster. It has well and truly struck our Arsenal squad. The chances of the Premier League title are looking slim. Let's see what happened. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang broke his foot in a match against Burnley and he is out for three months. He's been out for 11 days so far, so two to three months still to go. And our best player, our star striker, 20, uh, 17 goals in 20 games in the Premier League, he is out for the majority of the rest of this season. It's just absolutely crushing. So we'll quickly catch you up on the games that you've missed. The first of which was a 3-1 home win against Burnley in which the injury to Aubameyang did happen. We won 3-1 though. Lacazette, uh, Socrates and David Luiz with the goals after Nicolas Pepe had missed an early penalty. And as you can see, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang got injured in the 17th minute and that resulted in the three-month injury. We then went away from home and got a fortunate 2-0 away victory against West Ham. Alexander Lacazette really is relishing in the lone striker role. He got himself two goals in today's game, 13th minute and 87th minute. We then went away from home again, this time against Watford and won 3-1. Alexander Lacazette with a brace once again and David Luiz with the other. And that sees the Premier League table looking like this. We are sitting in second position still. Uh, one point ahead of Manchester United with a game in hand but four points behind Liverpool, having played the same number of games. The injury to Aubameyang has resulted in a change in formation. We have ditched the two striker formation. We're not trying to fit both Lacazette and Aubameyang in at the same side now, and I don't feel it's necessary to force Amin Guri into the squad when it's not necessary. So with Aubameyang going out, we have uh, adopted a left winger, and due to that, we have made a new signing. Welcome Everton to the club. He is a player who I've never managed on Football Manager. I always see the bigger sides signing him in the first season of uh, saves that I've done in the past on FM20. So I'm happy to, to get him into the club and see how he will perform. It has took up a big chunk of our budget though. £22 million spent on him. Hopefully he will be able to at least fill a little bit of the gap that Aubameyang will leave in our side. He'll be playing as the inside forward on that left-hand side, but he can play on the right should he be required to. Uh, not an ideal position for him in our sort of system. But um, he's yet to play a game for us yet. He will start today's game against Liverpool. <laughs> so we're playing Liverpool at home. The game where we needed to win to get ourselves back into the Premier League title chase. And Aubameyang is out. So is Hector Bellerin as well. Which is our two best performing players of the season so far. So for today's episode it will be the, that game against Liverpool. And it will be the second leg in the League Cup semi-final to round out our January transfer window. We still have £56 million remaining after that evidence signing, but we are over our wages quite a bit. So we will adjust things here and see where things stand after that. So maybe £47 million with 100 k available. That doesn't give me enough to sign Ruben Diaz, which is disappointing. He was the main target for the transfer window. And I've still been peppering Benfica with offers in the hopes that Ruben Diaz gets that sick, he requests a transfer, but it hasn't happened yet, and I feel like it might not happen. There has been one outgoing though, um, I, in anticipation of Ruben Diaz signing, we actually sold um, uh, Mustafi to Watford for £17 million, anticipating us signing a new centre-half. Even if we don't sign um, a centre-half, we're still pretty well covered in that place. We've got Socrates and David Luiz, of course, as our starters, but then we've also got Rob Holden and Callum Chambers, who can slot in at centre-back should they be required. Um, but yeah, our squad, <laughs> I'm in a little bit of a disarray after that Aubameyang um, injury. So we've got the rest of this January transfer window to try and fix that, improve our squad. I definitely think the signing of um, Everton will improve um, over Emil Smith-Rowe, who's been playing on the left-hand side the past couple of games. He will find himself getting a lot more game time due to the injury, so he'll be glad of that. But let's get into our team selection for today and see who is going to be facing against uh, Liverpool. So injuries are very much dictating our squad today. Burn Leno will start in goal. Malqui starts for the injured Hector Bellerin. Callum Chambers starts for the injured Socrates, who's out for another 12 days or so. David Luiz and Kieran Tini complete our defensive line. Thomas Partey in defensive midfield, who arguably would be Lucas Torreira, who's also injured. Matteo Guendouzi in the centre. Nicholas Pepe on the right-hand side. Mesut Ozil in the centre with Everton on the left. Played in behind Lacazette, who I'm hoping will start bagging a lot of goals now. He's up front by himself. He's already scored four goals in two games up front on his Todd. We'll see how it continues today. But Liverpool, best side in the league by a country mile. It's going to take a mammoth performance from some of our boys today if we're to get a win. 
Any new signings or any surprises in the Liverpool side? It doesn't look like there is. Alex Grimaldo on the left-hand side, the only one who might be. Um, I think he, they signed him in the summer, actually. Uh, I don't know what's happened to Andy Robinson. He's not on the bench, so I'm assuming he's injured. So, Liverpool, best side in the league. If we're to get a win today, it'll be the game of the season. Without a shadow of a doubt, Liverpool are looking pretty unstoppable at the minute they've won so many games in a row. It's not even funny. Um... But away from home, I mean, for them, they're away from home. It might be our opportunity to actually pinch a win. If I remember rightly, in the away uh, tie against Liverpool, I don't think we played that badly. I think we were pretty unfortunate to end up getting beat. So you never know, maybe our system might be well suited to face um, uh, Liverpool. But first highlight of the game here, Everton plays the ball in. It is cleared. Mo Salah gets rid. Is this still going to continue? It is. Malqui heads it down to Ozil. Nicholas Pepe finds Lacazette. He's in behind. One-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. And Alexander Lacazette continues his rich vein of goal scoring form. Getting his 13th goal of the season. Putting us 1-0 up inside a minute. And that is the perfect start to today's game. Excellent player by the three on the right-hand side. Great little through ball by Nicholas Pepe. Who's been out of form a little bit recently. But with that assist, he's definitely pulled things back. And we've got something to defend now. Another highlight now, Mesut Ozil with a free kick. It's played back post and Callum Chambers is there, not close enough. Another highlight now, Mesut Ozil on this left-hand side, 25 minutes in, knocks it back to Taney, who's carrying it far. Goes back to Mesut Ozil. And Mesut Ozil gets his goal, his seventh goal of the season. We are making Liverpool look like mugs in the first 25 minutes or so of this game. I don't want to get too excited because they could quite easily come back into this game and take the three points away from us. But... As things stand, we are dominant. We are performing exceptionally well. And who's Aubameyang? Another highlight now. A big kick from Leno finds Everton on this left-hand side. And Tierney's overlapping beautifully. And he gets uh, further down the pitch and at the final third. Can he whip the ball in? He can. Lacazette is there. And he hits it straight at Alisson. Anywhere else and that's going in. Seven minutes to go in the first half. Liverpool looks like it might be their first attack of the game with Alexander-Arnold coming down that right-hand side. Maybe we can nip the ball off Naby Keita. Doesn't look like we can. They're keeping it well with Wijnaldum and uh, Van Dijk. Mo Salah, oh, he completely does Taney and another. But Bernd Leno stands up strong and keeps him out. And the highlight continues though. Nicholas Pepe finds Everton. He goes for goal. It comes back to Thomas Partley. Back to Everton. Can he whip the ball in back post? He goes back towards Kieran Taney. I'm not even sure if this is a highlight. It's just continued from Liverpool's previous attack. Taney, back to Thomas Partey. Come on, can we build something? Mesut Ozil. We're keeping the ball well. And, and nah, it wasn't a highlight. Corner for Liverpool. Grimaldo plays it in. We don't do very well getting rid of it though. And oh, why did the goal? I, I, for a minute there, I thought it was a penalty. One final highlight of this first half. Mesut Ozil plays it back to Malqui. Whips the ball in. Everton's back post on his debut. That would have been beautiful. And that has been a hell of a performance from the boys in the first half. Arsenal 2, Liverpool 0. No need for any changes in the second half just yet. We've knocked our wing backs back from an attack duty to a support duty just to make sure we are keeping an eye on the threat of the um, Liverpool wingers. It might end up costing us in the end, you never know, but I'm happy with things. how things are going so far. Grimaldo plays the ball into Firmino. <laughs> Completely unmarked in the six-yard box and he knocks it over. That should be 2-1. Another highlight now, Lacazette receives the ball. Over the top and he's in behind the defence. Plays it back to Kieran Tini. They are pinned back into that 18 yard box. But they are closing us down well. As Gwen Doozy finds Nicholas Pepe who hits the bar. Oh it's a free kick. He was offside anyway. Another highlight now. Everton on this left hand side. Plays it back to Ozil who finds Party who finds Tini. Um, we're keeping the ball well. We're not really. Um, not too much movement from our attacking players. Is resulting in risky passes. That could end up costing us if Liverpool can catch us on the counter. Taney now knocks it down the left-hand side for Everton. Can he do something special? He whips the ball in. Lacazette's there. And another good save for Alisson. He's actually had a decent game despite his average rate. And he made a couple of good saves for um, Liverpool. Another highlight now for Binho with 22 minutes to go. Malqui, yeah, well defended there, my friend. Composure is a good uh, stat for Malqui there. As Nicolas Pepe plays in Ozil, who plays in Lacazette. He's got a lot of work to do from this angle. Unlikely that was ever going in. With 15 minutes to go, we will look to make some changes. Malqui is struggling out there, but unfortunately, we haven't got the options off the bench to be able to bring on. Kalasinac can come on for Taney on that left-hand side. Nicholas Pepe can come off and we'll bring on Reese Nelson in his place. Um, 
And I think we're going to save our final sub in case of injury. But with only 10 minutes or so remaining, Arsenal haven't, uh, Liverpool haven't really went for this. They look like they're accepting the turn. I'd rather went attacking now. We will go on the counter should me mouse work as it should. Very attacking by Liverpool. And Kolasinac can maybe counter them on this left-hand side. He drives past one. He drives past the other. He's brought down by Van Dijk. That was in the box, ref. Nay, nay to console VAR. I'm telling you now, that was in the box. And he's given the penalty. Who is stepping up to take it? David Luiz. <laughs> David Luiz, please. Put this game beyond doubt. And he does it. Arsenal 3. Liverpool 0. We are absolutely unbeatable at home. We've won every single game so far. And Liverpool... Whilst they've had a couple of opportunities, they haven't looked like taking today's game. We have been dominant. And even without Aubameyang, we are still in the hunt. And now we have it then. Arsenal 3, Liverpool 0, Lacazette, Ozil and David Luiz with the goals. That is a fantastic, fantastic performance and a fantastic result. Which hopefully might see Liverpool come off the rails a little bit. We move to within one point of them. Level on games. Got the better goal difference. Ugh, things are stacking up to become an interesting second half of the season. So we've got one game in between before we'll get to the Wolves game. Uh, it's Brentford in the FA Cup fourth round. And of course, we've still got the rest of the January transfer window to do with the hopes of signing a first-choice centre-back. Might not happen. It might. Uh, considering we're only doing one season with Arsenal, I really, really want to get this money spent. We'll see how the rest of the uh, window goes and I'll, I'll tell you if anything happens. So we're at the Wolves game. No further signings just yet, but I think I might have found a way to finagle the uh, Ruben Diaz signing. We'll wait and see on that. But the one game was Brentford in the FA Cup fourth round. We did rotate quite heavily and we managed to win 3 0 away from home. Geary started up top and got himself a goal. Reese Nelson on the right hand side uh, started and got himself a goal. And Everton got his first goal for the club in his second game in the 60th minute. Safely seen us through to the third round, uh, fifth round. And the lineup for today's game is much the same as it was against Liverpool. Uh, Hector Bellerin comes in for Malqui as he is returning from injury. He should be able to see the full match out, but we'll probably take him off at some point in the second half. Callum Chambers keeps his spot as Socrates is still injured. Uh, Thomas Party in defensive midfield with Gwen Doozy. Everything else is pretty much the same. Hoping for a good performance from Everton today. Um, being at home as well, you know, getting to the League Cup final is not nothing, even though our board don't care about the competition. I personally do. I would like to win some silverware with Arsenal this season, if possible. Uh, Wolves, we've played them three or four times so far this season, and this is how they always line up, with the five at the back. A decent side, but we've got the 2-1 goal advantage from the first leg. Let's see how we get on. First highlight of the game, three minutes in. It's Wolves on the attack. They've got a lot of men pressed forward. Um, we're closing them down pretty well, not giving them too much space time and space on the ball but they find a way through on this left hand side with Morgan, Gibbs, White plays out to Otto we'll close them down well again they're not they're just so boring to watch Wolves I'm not being funny like they're absolutely terrible to watch on Football Manager but thankfully we nip the ball back and Nicholas Pepe drives at their defence goes all the way and almost puts us 1-0 up Another highlight now, six minutes in Kieran Tierney on this left hand side for us the ball's whipped in by Party, but it's cleared uh, only as far as Hector Bellerin Tini knocks it down for Everton on this left-hand side as the highlight continues. And Lacazette is there. Everton with the assist. Alexander Lacazette has been relishing this uh, striker spot up front on his own. And Everton turns provider for Alexander Lacazette's 14th goal of the season so far. Some good play by us down this left-hand side. Everton cuts back on his favoured right foot. And Lacazette heads home, beats Rui Patricio. And we are in a comfortable, comfortable position now. 3-1 on aggregate. We're not really retaining possession pretty, uh, too well. So we are going to lower the tempo and lower our um, uh, our passing to shorter passing and hoping to retain some possession of the ball. We are going to go to a positive team mentality as well as they are playing on the counter as another highlights in. And Everton gets his second goal in three games. Mesut Ozil turns provider this time from the corner. Set pieces, we've actually done really, really well from set pieces this season, particularly with Mesut Ozil taking them. And that is a front post corner of dreams. Everton 2-0, 4-1, champion. Nicholas Pepe with a free kick this time. It's cleared by Gibbs White, but Chambers keeps the attack alive. Plays in the back to Thomas Party, and Pepe has got so much space on this right hand side. He beats his man. He's in the box. He's really in a poor run of form, Nicholas Pepe. We'll see by his average rating in today's game. I don't think he's doing particularly well, but um, Ozil plays in the corner. It is cleared. Yeah, but as we can see, Nicholas Pepe is on a 6.3 so far for this match, which is not ideal. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna change his um 
play a role or an inside forward from in, uh, inverted winger just to see if it might end up changing how he plays and improving his performances because whilst he started the first half of the season electrically he hasn't been so good since we've changed formation Wolves on the attack in the second half Doherty down this right hand side whips the ball in Neto's first there but Leno can't claim with only 20 minutes or so remaining we will look to make some subs keep Kieran Taney fresh in particular getting on Kalasnas for him we'll take Hector Bellerin off as well and bring on Malqui in his place. And for the final 15 minutes or so, we are going to take off Nicholas Pepe, who hasn't had a great game. And we'll bring on Reese Nelson to complete our substitutes. Highlight now, Mesut Ozil about to take another corner for us. It's whipped in front post. It's cleared this time by Wolves. Only to Everton on the edge of the box. And Everton, three goals, three games. An absolutely fantastic strike this time. Rui Patricio does get his hand to it, but he can't keep it out. And another set-piece goal, although it wasn't directly... You know, it came from a set-piece opportunity. Here it is, Everton on the edge. Rui Patricio gets his hand to it. He's pretty unfortunate to not keep that out. But it's now Arsenal 3, Wolves 0. And time is ticking away. And now we have it. Absolute domination from us. Great performances from Everton in particular with two goals and one assist. Exactly what we were needing in Aubameyang's uh, absence. Him stepping up, replacing him in terms of goals and performances. That's what we need and that's what we're getting so far. And Liverpool got beat off Manchester City. We are now only one point behind Liverpool with a game in hand. Today's episode has been fantastic. Can we top it off with a Ruben Diaz signing? And we've done it. Right at the back end of the January transfer window, we are going to be able to complete the signing of Ruben Diaz. How we've managed to do it? We've had to cancel Danny Sabellos' loan. So he has returned to Real Madrid, which saved us 130k, I think, in the wages, which meant we were able to play around with the transfer budget and the wage budget a little bit to give us a transfer budget of 54 million. And we needed 53 to get this deal over the line. And there it is. That is our January transfer business completed. We have signed an absolutely fantastic, fantastic centre-back with plenty of room to grow. He's already better than Socrates and David Luiz. He will improve our defence. We are, we are in for a hell of a second half of the season. We're still in the Europa League. We're still in the FA Cup. We've got a League Cup final to come. And we're also in the hunt for the Premier League. In terms of the next episode then, I think we will bring you the Partizan game, the second leg of our Europa League tie to see if we can make it through to the next round. And the League Cup final, which will be against Chelsea. How do you rate our transfer business? And I'm pretty happy with the signs we were able to bring in. And I think we've improved our squad enough to be able to see us in through the end of the season. But if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.